Sekhmet was the Egyptian goddess of warriors and healing. In Egyptian mythology, she was known as a solar deity and was even called the daughter of Ra. Sekhmet was believed to protect the pharaohs in the times of fierce battle. Her protection even extended to the realms of the dead. Sekhmet was often associated with the goddess Hathor and Bastet. But was she a fierce destroyer or a protective lioness? What were the myths and rituals surrounding them? What is her impact on our psyche? Find answers to these and more questions in our new episode of the Egyptian Mythology series. Sekhmet was represented as a female with a lioness head that is dressed in red and carries the uraeus and the solar disk. Her representation has shown a prominent association with the Vajet and the Egyptian reality. Sekhmet was considered the wife of the god Ptah, the creator of the world, and mother of his son Nefertum, the healer and physician. The three of them made up the so-called triad of Memphis. As Sekhmet was considered to be the daughter of the almighty Ra, she was an important goddess that represented the vengeful aspects of his power, the Eye of Ra. She was believed to breathe fire, and the hot winds of the desert were her making. Some sources even tell that Sekhmet was able to bring plague and disease, but she was also called upon to protect worshippers from them. The Smith Surgical Papyrus mentions Sekhmet and malicious gods and demons as the cause of an epidemic that afflicted the Egyptians every year. One magical spell stated that these demons of disease rode on the wind. The text reads as the following. Withdraw ye diseased demons, the wind shall not reach me, that those who pass by to work disaster against me. I am Horus who passes by the diseased ones of Sekhmet. Horus healthy despite Sekhmet, I am the unique one, son of Bastet, I die not through thee." End quote. If you want more content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel and liking the video. Your support is highly appreciated. When it comes to etymology, Sekhmet's name comes from an ancient Egyptian word that means power or might. Her prominent epithets were the one before whom evil trembles, mistress of dread, lady of slaughter, and she who mauls. Robert Masters says the following about our goddess. She came into Egypt from a place unknown and, at the time, unrecorded. Some of her names refer to this very great antiquity, lady of the place of the beginning of time, and one who was before the gods were. As a form of the Great Mother, Sekhmet is also known as mother of all the gods." End quote. When it comes to the stories surrounding Sekhmet, the most popular one was when the god Ra sent the goddess Hathor in the form of Sekhmet to destroy those who were against him. Sekhmet was so enraged that her bloodthirsty behavior didn't stop at the end of battle, but prolonged itself to the destruction of almost all mankind. When Ra saw the sheer power of the lioness goddess, he poured out beer dyed with a red hematite that resembled blood. As Sekhmet drank the blood of her enemies, she got deceived by the Almighty God and thus gave up the slaughter for the slumber. This myth shows that the mighty power of Sekhmet is boundless and blood-curdling. It shows the sheer power of the feminine energy that most myth interpreters are terrified of. She resembles the Great Mother archetype in its protective and devouring polarities, which leads us into a quote by Eric Newman who says the following. Thus the Great Mother is uroboric, terrible and devouring, beneficent and creative, a helper but also alluring and destructive, a maddening enchantress, yet a bringer of wisdom, bestial and divine, 
voluptuous harlot and inviolable virgin, immemorially old and eternally young." End quote. Similar to Ishtar, Sekhmet was also the goddess of pestilence, plague, war and drought. The desert was the place where she roamed in solitude, in the full body of a lioness. On the other hand, Sekhmet was the patron deity of physicians and healers. Her priests became known as skilled doctors. As a result, the fearsome deity sometimes called the Lady of Terror was also known as the Lady of Life. When it comes to festivals, one in Sekhmet's honor was held in the city of Dendera. This festival was done with an aim to pacify the wrath of our goddess by indulging in dancing, playing and ecstasy of lovemaking. Everyone drank beer stained with pomegranate as they worship Sekhmet, the mistress and lady of the tomb, the gracious one, the destroyer of rebellion and the mighty one of enchantments. Another festival was held in the temple of Mat in Luxor. Historical records of tens of thousands attending the festival exist. These findings were made in the temple of Mut because, when Thebes rose to greater prominence, Mut absorbed some of characteristics of Sekhmet. The temple excavations at Luxor discovered a porch of the drunkenness built onto the temple by the pharaoh Hatshepsut during the height of her 20-year reign. Now let's turn back to the items she was represented with, the uraeus which she carried on her head with the solar disk represents her as the goddess of the kundalini energy that Egyptians had knowledge of. Robert Masters tells us more about it with the following passage. There is a tradition which says that there once existed an elaborate system of sexual mysticism and magic originating with Sekhmet and which later was lost, perhaps taken away by her. Important for this system were both the Kundalini energy and those centers of psychic energy known in India as chakras. The word Shakti is itself a Hindu derivation from the name Sekhmet. End quote. As Sekhmet was also known as the Lady of the Red Garment, let's explore the meaning behind that color. Candace Kant and Annie K say the following. Often referred to as the Lady of Red Linen, Sekhmet wears a close-fitting dress that reaches to her ankles. The color red links the ideas of life and regeneration with fire, blood and the ochre-colored funerary henna. The word for red, desher, formed the word desert, deshret, meaning the red land. In contrast to the black land, which was fertile and habitable, the red land was dangerous and unpredictable. Roth, desheru, associated with Sekhmet through the myth of the destruction of humanity, had its roots in the word red. Thus, the color red was associated with anger and destruction, signifying the fierce nature of the radiant sun. And as such, the color was used for the serpent amulets representing the Eye of Re, the fiery, protective and potentially destructive aspect of the sun deities. The color red also signified the beginning of life, when the yearly inundation of the Nile began. The waters looked greenish before they turned an opaque, dark ruddy color from a type of red algae pushed out of the central African tributaries and downriver by the melting snow and flood waters. Sekhmet was closely associated with the goddess Bastet. For example, a statue of Sekhmet was dressed in red facing west, while the statue of Bastet was dressed in green and faced east. Bastet was even considered to be Sekhmet's counterpart, and in the festival of Hathor, they embodied the duality central to Egyptian mythology. Sekhmet represented Upper Egypt, while Bastet represented Lower Egypt. Sekhmet was mentioned many times in the various spells of the Book of the Dead, as both a creative and vicious force. However, 
she is most known as the protector of Maat, balance or justice, with the epithet, the one who loves Maat and who detests evil. As we can see, Sekhmet was also the goddess of regeneration and renewal that came after a period of destruction and chaos, when the waters of the Nile flood the lands of Egypt, only to mark a new cycle of fertility. Sekhmet was the one that stood at the doors of transubstantiation, and the one who burned all past attachments to allow the new saplings of life to grow. So this is it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for rebuilding Olympus.